it was 19. Quiet. I bought this thing in, in like 1972, I guess it was, when I got back to Vietnam. And today will be the last time I get to play on the stage. So it's bringing like 40 years, 40 some odd years to an end today. And it couldn't be done any better than it's been done today. Yeah. Woo! Just left by the fine folks over the track shack has thrown some of the benefits and it was a great turnout and, and a lot of love shown. I don't know if you heard the story on this thing here, but Rick, Rick's been after me to, to do something. I kept turning him down. So we're not going to do it. Just, uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't think anybody would show up. He'd been to two of them before. And like Anthony Terry says, man, I'm running out of ways to tell him goodbye. <laughs> and it's just, uh, I, see, I see you folks here and so many memories have, have come to come into me. I've got, I've got my nephew and his wife here. I don't think you've ever seen me play until a couple weeks ago. I've got a girl named Nikki here. I don't know her last name now, but she just discovered me on uh, Facebook. And last time I saw her was on my 16th birthday. She was the girl I dated for my 16th birthday. And it's the first time I've seen her since then. And... The faces that have come in here tonight for the for the blues community and some of the country things has brought back so so many memories of all the nice things that you guys have done. The, the Houston Blues Society, the Benevolent Society, they uh, they helped me out years ago when we were trying to get some help for a friend of mine. And then they, they came through like a champ, and I've always remembered that. I appreciate it, because they're a very low-key group. They don't, they, don't, uh, they don't go out and usually do these things. In fact, I didn't know if they'd let me do it. And then I found out Boyd was part of, part of it. Was, was part of it. it uh, it's a good cause. So if you know if you got any dollars left over, there's, there's people out there like every place that need help. Just... Do what you can with what you got. Those of you who keep thinking I'm going to recover, this is not recovery. <laughs> I will be out of here by January anyway. I can't tell you just the last the last couple weeks, not that it's soaked in anymore. I, I, I realized it when you first told me. That, that was it. But all the times that we've had together and the music that we have made together with as many people as we have, you don't get rich doing this stuff. Right? You know, if you're a musician, you know this. And Tom runs a place that's got music six nights a week. He's got a place for musicians to come be and come discover each other and donate their time and their artistry. It's an amazing work, and Tom, I love you dearly. Tom also helped me out. I had a record collection that ever since CDs came in and digital came in, my vinyl collection was worth nothing. I had, I had, I had records from Les Paul and Mary Ford. I mean, just, and Tom is an, a vinyl aficionado. And it took him, I brought him over here, and it was like six or seven trips from the van to take all the records I had out of there. And he's got around here somewhere, your story. So, Tom, thank you for that. I built my music room around it. The, the musicians that have graced this stage, both in the country and the blues, and, and just anything really. Uh, they, they welcome your support and they count on it because it's, it's okay to make music but it's a lot more fun when there's somebody there to participate. And 
You all have made all of us welcome in your lives, in your homes, in the places that you go to parties. And you've always mystified me. I have never felt compelled to do anything but slow dance. I've never wanted to jump up and fast dance in my life. I do not understand why you guys want to do that. I'm grateful for it. <laughs> you know, you know, I I, I slow dance because I had something else in mind. <laughs> never felt compelled to never felt compelled to fast dance. I am amazed by the fact that you guys do that and grateful. And since today is it, uh, I just want to say thank you. And like everybody does, and the memories, the, the hundreds of memories that are going through my mind right now of just the people I've seen today, I'm just, I, I sometimes wonder, not if it's been worth it, because it has. I, I never regret it. When I got back from Vietnam, I said I was going to play music, because people had been shooting at me. <laughs> If I survived that, when I got home, I was going to play music until I had to put the stuff in the pawn shop. I've never had a pawn ticket to this day. And the people I've played with have taught me so much and helped me grow up as a musician, as a person. And I hope it's a man. I have not done anything to warrant this that countless other people here, here have done. There's been so much kindness out there. And there's so much love. Miss Leslie did two benefits for me, and it took a lot of organization. And working with the Blues Society, they brought the blues community and the country community over to Track Shack yeah. together. And had a wonderful day of music and communion and racing dollars. And it's just uh, it's just this kind of thing that musicians are. And most of them are like that. And we treasure you for coming out. And I thank you for <laughs> I thank you for 40 years of something to do, somebody to play for them and a lot of laughs, and a lot of really bad jokes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost compelled to tell you uh, a cannibal joke Jim taught me. <laughs> I won't do it, I won't do it. <laughs> I love his cannibal jokes. <laughs> the love, I didn't think anybody was gonna show it today, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Rick, 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 Rick will tell you. <laughs> I just, I just feel like we just <laughs> said, nah, man, there's only been a couple of them done. I don't think anybody's going to go. <laughs> and I was talking to, and I finally kept putting it off, but I talked to Larry Evans, and he just gave me his typical Larry, Levick, Larry Evans thing, which is, just shut up and do it. <laughs> which was what Miss Leslie did when we, <laughs> when we found out, when I found out that she was putting the thing on in secret. And I said, I, I don't want to do one. She goes, dude, it's going to happen. Just deal with it. I thank you for that kind of love. I thank you for that kind of caring. I thank you for the privilege of letting me play with some of the best musicians I've ever played with in my life, especially the last 10 years or so. Gotten to play music, taking me places I would have had, had, had to pay to go. <laughs> it would have, eh. I have got so many things I'm going to take on to the next step, and I don't know what it is, but if we're allowed to keep our memories when we pass, I take so much more into the next slot that it's going to be a long time before I ever run out just to review it once. I shall miss you all. I miss playing now. I can barely get up on this stage, which just told me it's, it's time. And... Uh, so it's like this base has started it out, and this base will close it out today. I thank you all. We love you, man. We love you.
I told you you were a legend. It's officially Ed Starkey Day. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big hand? Brad Absher on guitar and vocals. It's Leslie Sloan on fiddle. Or violin. It depends on if you're a high class or, or blues guy. Fiddle. Or because I'm not you're high class. <laughs> Uh, Mike Patton on the drums, Barry Sellen on the keyboards, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ed Starkey on the bass. Thank you guys, let's try to have some fun now, alright? Love you, Ed.